Oh, he fell off and I got him. I got him. Oh, got him. that's money right there. Welcome back, uh, Norman Moctima out here on the water. I got special guests with me, Ron Kless. Uh, Ron, uh, I had the fortune to compete with him on uh, quite a few qualifiers and regionals throughout the US. So um, <clears throat> he still competes, he's still getting after it. And uh, I think he's may have convinced me to try and compete again. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Anyway, this is Ron Kless. I'll, I'll let him introduce himself and uh, uh, go from there. Take 215. <laughs> go. Hi, my name is Ron Kless. I'm a competitive fly fishing angler. I uh, love competing all over the United States. I like the competition style of fishing. Uh, I enjoy it. I learn a lot. I'm also a student of fly fishing. I love all different types of fly fishing and regular fishing. I enjoy helping a lot of people out on the water. and A lot of times people will see me out here and I'm always sharing flies or helping them get into fish. I used to be a guide at the Blue Quill Angler for 12 years, so I've kind of grown a passion and a love for fly fishing and learning how to get out there and help and work with people, so I really enjoy doing those type of things. I work very hard to make sure that as I get out there, I try to share and be more a steward of fly fishing rather than just kind of being that one guy that hogs a hole and kind of pushes people around and gets out of the way, so that's me. So I'm here from New Mexico. I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. I um, live here in Albuquerque. Um, we have to drive about 100 miles back and forth to go fishing anywhere. It's uh, kind of hard to get around, but it's worth it when you get out here. New Mexico is beautiful. All right, so as far as competitive yeah. anglers, um, you know, there's always a lot of questions about our gear. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, your nymphing, um, your nymphing rods, your Euro flies, your nymphing leaders, etc. But there's a little bit more that goes to it as far as how we actually set up our gear and whatnot for uh, a session on the river. So I'll uh, let Ron break it down and go over his setup because you know he is actually putting time in right now to try and uh, practice for upcoming regionals and qualifiers and whatnot. So uh, yeah, I'll let him break it down. So first off, I start off, I have uh, boots with cleats in the bottoms of them. I use knee pads when I'm out and about on the water and this isn't because I crawl around, it's just because if I fall or anything like that, you can take a hit on sharp rocks and it can really put you down. I usually carry a walking stick with me. Um, I don't use it all the time, but for the most part, if I need it, it's always there. I make sure that I have a wading belt on at all times. Believe it or not, if you fall in and you have a wading belt on, you won't get as much water down your waders. I use a chest pack, and the reason why I do that is just for the fact that the chest pack, everything's right here readily accessible, all my fly boxes and everything, so I'm not having to twist the fanny pack or move packs around to get to it. So when I set my pack up, I'll have fly boxes staged inside, and usually they're tethered, and they'll be labeled. So that way when I get tired, I'm not paying attention, I'll know which box to go. So there are different colors just for that fact. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set up a day box on top. And what this means is I'll take patterns that I've already seen the water, looked at the water and decided, hey, this is what I'm going to start for the day or believe this is the right selection of flies to start with. I'll have these set up here so I don't have to keep opening and closing my boxes all the time. So that way it's less chance of fumbling them or dropping them in the water. I make sure that everything's accessible. Um, hemostats, tippet, different things of that nature. I make sure that everything is there, but it's tethered. So if I lose it, it's not going in the water. Nothing worse than losing $60 with a fluorocarbon as you go. My wife gave me a fish counter. I don't get to use it much because I don't catch much, <laughs> but if I did, this would be nice. When I stage my net, I have my net staged two different ways. One, I have it on the back with a magnet, so anytime I'm using it, I can reach and get it. And then when I'm done, I'm able to immediately put it right back and it's hands-free. If I need to use the net on my waist, I literally have a lug where I just put it in the pouch here, then if I need it, I can literally get it or drop it right back into the pouch. 
so that way I don't have to worry about my net tripping me up or losing my net in the water. It's hard when you're grabbing your net and you're getting drug around. <laughs> the pack that I use on the back is an Umquist style and it also has a backpack on it. So, you know, most important thing like toilet paper, very, very important. Um, water, hey. snacks, <laughs> very, very important toilet paper. <laughs> I'm using the Hardy Ultra Disc Reel. Um, I've got a double taper two weight line on this so that way I can actually cast flies and it doesn't have any type of a sag through my guides when I have it set up. I'm using a Hardy two weight ultralight rod. This is the 10 foot eight rod. I took this rod to New Zealand and I was landing six to eight pound fish with it. I tried to blow it up and I couldn't. I understand that they have a lot of power, quick reaction, they're set up very well, but this one is a 10 foot eight. It's an ought two, so it has a very soft tip so you can fish very light tippet. I have a 10 foot clear or a highlighted yellow um, fluorocarbon leader that goes up to a 30 inch cider. And I have it, it's multiple colors so that I can see, one, I can see the yellow line, the sun's making it glow, and then I can see the cider, the multiple colors. So that way it's easier for me to, to pick where the, the flies are so I can raise and lower in the water. I don't sink the cider, but I use it to give me kind of depth perception as I go through it. I stage my flies on here where I have 22 to 24 inches below, my point fly is at 22 to 24 inches below my dropper fly. The point fly is gonna be a three millimeter um, Frenchy style pattern, black with kind of an orange. And then I've got a small betis pattern, a little olive that I'm gonna start off with today, a little flashback on it. There's a huge amount of betis hatching right now, so I'm just gonna kind of play with it and see what happens. What's the distance between your cider and your uh, dropper? So ciders and my dropper, as it stands right now, I roughly have about 35 inches. The water here is between two and a half to four feet deep. So I'm trying to get that zone where I'm just ticking where my cider is just about touching the water. And I wanna make sure that it's real close so that I can get the depth perception of whether the, the line is straight up and down or at an angle so that I can control the drag and control the drift, the depth of the drift. Yeah, or I'll show you guys the flies at the end of the day because ultimately, you know, we start with something in mind <clears throat> and progress from there. And then we just kind of dial it in, piece it together uh, as we fish through water and time of day, you know, temperature is everything, you know, hatches, obviously, preference uh, of, of fish. So uh, we'll, we'll check those out at the end of the day. Well, we talked a lot about stuff to get ready to go fish. So I'd say, let's go fish. And uh, we've got a pretty sweet little section right here. Nice little riffle kind of dropping in off the shelf over here. Uh, some breaks and seams, but definitely significantly slower than uh, some of the main current out on the opposite side of the river. And uh, yeah, Ron, uh, break, real quick, break us, uh, break down your, your approach right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off close to far. There's fast water and soft water along the edges and just slowly pick this apart. I wanna stay as close to the bank as I can as I'm working it and then just slowly work my way out. Six inches, six inches, six inches and I go, I'm looking for the softest water or to get underneath where the water drops down to a, like off of a gravel bar and then drops off that shelf and goes into a deep hole. I'm looking to fish underneath the fast current or along the sides of the fast current where the fish are gonna be holding down below feeding. So I'm gonna start <laughs> off right here off these rock piles. There's a nice seam, flies in. The wind's blowing pretty good, so you're gonna kinda of keep your cider as low to the water as you can. So right off your rod tip, rather than having a lot of line out. I'm waiting for that cider to stop, jump, or even go to a different direction. It's so subtle when it's cold that the fish, you won't even know that it's a fish. You'll think it's the bottom. At the end, I always do a hook set and then follow through with my cast right overhand. I try not to waste any motion when I'm fishing. Try to keep everything smooth and efficient. There we go. There you are. Fish on. I try and lead the fish upstream slightly so that way they're aerodynamic, a little easier. And the net up and fish on. Oh, ah. come on. <laughs> and the circus music plays. And that was on the Frenchie. Sweet. Frenchie. Yep. So just as an FYI, scorable fish in a competition is 20 centimeters. That would just about make it. A little short guy. Nice little brown. Cool. Now that fish was hanging right off the edge. 
in the slow and fast current. Yeah, it was right in, in front of you. Not on the soft water. That was just a few right feet here. from you. Yep, right off the rod tip. Fish close, people. All right, so just watching Ron. He's starting to work his way out into some deeper water. Moved up, get a, get a higher angle. Water's got a little bit of tint to it. Um, probably, I don't know, what would you think, Ron, as far as temperatures in the water? Low 40s? Yeah, low 40s. Yeah, so pretty chilly, but obviously we had one fish that was willing to willing to play, so hopefully that'll, that trend will continue. We just So I'm trying to get my depth right coming through here. I'm just barely getting towards the bottom at the end, so I'm probably gonna change my point fly go to 3.5 millimeter bead so that I can get down a little quicker in this deeper water. Right now I'm trying to get a little higher up and then just kind of manage my line so that it'll sink as it gets down into that spot where we think the fish are. Make sure as you're training or you're fishing try to learn to fish left-handed as well as right-handed. Sometimes it'll give you a better, give you a little bit more drift bit longer but again I probably need to change my depth change my weight so I'm gonna change my weight out put a heavier fly on so I started off with a Frenchie which caught a fish close in but I'm not able to get to the bottom so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to a, a heavier fly so I'm gonna try a pheasant tail just a four millimeter bead one so that I can get it down and you'll see that the cider will absolutely straighten out quick when this happens. And I use a clinch knot. I know there's a bunch of different types of knots you could use. Um, so yeah, the sink rate on that increased dramatically. Yep. So he's getting down within a foot rather than two or three feet as opposed to the other fly. Especially when you're dealing with wind, that contact is important. The uh, lighter flies, your uh, wind will kind of create more of a belly yep. in your cider. Uh, than if you had some slightly heavier nymphs on there to keep it straight and taut in order to see the twitch a little bit better or you know have less um, pull, push from the wind on your cider uh, creating a different effect on your drift and your presentation. So. You get a lot of short strikes too if you don't have you know, if you're not if you're not heavy enough sometimes. What's that? You you seem to get a lot of short strikes and you don't you think you're missing them but they're actually on there but there's the yeah because you have a little too much slack, slack line, and, yep. and even that little bow in the cider yeah can delay your response on on yep. those hook sets because you're not seeing anything happen immediately oh that was a that was, that was a hit <laughs> <laughs> sorry folks i don't know if you were able to see that on on the camera but that <laughs> rod just <laughs> bent down man <laughs> i was like i think that's a hit <laughs> nope Crush that. So it looks like uh, on the point, the fly you yep. just switched up. Yeah. So bigger nymph, faster sink rate. That hit pretty quick too. That was within the first probably uh, foot or two of the drift. Yep. Come on. We need this. So in competition, it's every hard. fish yep. matters. Every fish to the net. I know, because Ron beat me one time by one fish, and he- It was he, two he, centimeters. <laughs> it was only two centimeters. You're like, how many? Oh, two centimeters. At least you didn't throw me out of the boat, so I got that going for me. Oh, oh shit. Did you ride all right? Dang. All right. He busted, or uh, no, no. spit you out. Yep. But, oh, well. Well, good thing we're practicing, getting it all dialed in today. <laughs> too much hard, too much pressure on this. So, go ahead and talk about how you were trying to land him. Okay, so what I was trying to do is get them angled upstream, get them over into a soft water, and then as I get them into the soft water, I had them about two feet still in the fast water. I was trying to raise them up, and when he turned again and dove down, the fly just popped loose. But the goal is to get him over in the soft water and then land and step underneath and pick them up. Yeah, so where Ron had him at that point where the fly popped out, you know, you might not have had them all that well to begin with, so that's just kind of one factor we got to maybe accept. But at the same time, uh, he was, that fish was at a point to where he could have lifted his rod tip back downstream up over the top of his head and brought the head up 
it towards the surface of the water and throwing that fish off balance and he might have been able to get the net under him at that point but so I made know, a rookie mistake. Hindsight 2020 <laughs> and uh, things Bad to learn as you go into mistake. the next session or to the next fish. There's one. There Ooh, he another is. One. But Booyah. that's where that fish was, right around those rocks. Yep. <laughs> All right, so let's try not to screw this one up. <laughs> All Come right, on. see if we learn anything from the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take the rod so I can, I can watch how it's done. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Keep them down low, keep them under the current as much as possible. Try to get them to yeah, come across. Got some, got some shoulders on this one. Yeah. The other one was smaller compared to this one. Okay, now I got them over in the soft water. Like right there, lift up. Boom. There we go. Nice. Dare say that point fly worked good. Yes, sir. That one? Yeah. Nice. They're all coming there from the is. same spot. Found a little, pile? Found found another a little bucket of them over there? Yep, they're in the same spot right off this point, like you said. That's a beast. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous buck. Look at that, Look at that nice thing. male. Ron's blow me down there working that and he's kind of worked his way downstream. I'm working my way up. Uh, I switched up. We got a orange tag on the dropper, size 16, and then I have a size 14 pink tag on the point. Uh, orange tag has a 2.8 mil bead. Pink tag has a 3.3 mil bead. I'm going to move the pink tag up. I'm going to put a 14 comp hair zero on the point. There's a fish. He's holding out there a little further. Orange tag, or pink tag, sorry. That guy's got some fight. And up, and he's in. Nice brown. Yeah, he was out there. He wasn't in the shallow stuff like I was expecting. Nice. Nice brown. Awesome. Thank you, fish. Another one. Yeah, they're out a little further. Second one. <laughs> they seem to be out in the deeper stuff. Yeah. And up. 
again on the pink tag. Cool, about the same size. Awesome. There's another one. Rainbow. Down the hairs here. That's a holdover, wouldn't you think? All right. Kind of stuck. <laughs> Feet are stuck. Ah. It was a weird bite. It just, just a subtle, subtle stop. It didn't, it didn't bounce. It didn't vibrate. It just. I made five casts in there, and then six casts stopped. Come on, buddy. Ah. Oh, <laughs> dang it! That's the, this is the hard. This is. This is the worst part of the whole deal because you get that pit in your stomach like, oh, please, please, please. Come on. Get back up here to your right. Oh, he fell off and I got him. <laughs> I got him. Oh, got him. <laughs> that's money right there. My, my feet are stuck. I mean, I am literally. That's a chunky fish. There we go. <laughs> Let him go, man. Th that was a lucky monkey shot. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, the camera's about to die, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll just sign off for right now. And yeah, thanks, Ron, for coming out and fishing. Uh, it's always fun when I get to fish with you, man, and compete with you, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> or against you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a true yeah, honor. I no really problem. appreciate it. I no learned problem, a lot. Man. So, um, yeah, in the end, uh, the afternoon proved tough. We moved from... Um, up river we were up river about oh five six miles and then uh that was actually really productive caught several fish uh we started in some shallower riffly type stuff which is kind of what we were fishing up river didn't really find anything got one fish down there and then it wasn't until we moved up into this slower deeper stuff more winter lie type area where uh i was able to turn a couple ron got that nice uh rainbow and uh, so we're getting, we're finding more fish now. So I think these fish down here are in the winter lie, up higher. They're more in their, their uh, summer feeding lie type situation. So uh, again, <clears throat> you know, you just work water until you find them and then try to pattern them out. Um, in this case, I wouldn't say it was really fly 
uh, fly oriented type uh, uh, fishing but you know the last two I got were on the Kuldegon size 16 what was that one on it was on the red butt red butt that looks like a size 14 maybe a 16, 16 pulling mill. size 16, yeah, 16, 16 pulling mill, pulling, pulling mill. Um, so we're trying we're downsizing matching a little bit closer to the blooming alls that are hatching um, versus before you know we're running big yep uh, Ron was running a size 12 yep. or yeah 12 4 mil bead pheasant tail uh, I'm trying to remember what I was running pink tag size 14 and a hair's ear size 14 comp hair's ear uh, <clears throat> yeah so we'll, we'll show you those all right so here's the flies that <clears throat> Ron and I were using so Ron started with the Frenchie and then he had upgraded to this uh, four millimeter bead pheasant tail soft tackle and that's what picked up <clears throat> those fish in that deeper faster moving trough uh, once he got the weight on there he was able to get down a little red butt variation uh, also running a red tag and then I was running a Kuldegon style a CDC collar on it pink tags and the comp hairs here uh, these are uh, 16s, 14s, and that 14 does have a 4 mil bead on it, so pretty heavy bead. Uh, I believe these are all, um, when you're looking at that one, that's a 3-3, three, three, 2 eight, 4 mil, and a 3-3. Three, three. So, all right, those are the flies. So anyway, thanks everybody for coming along. You know where to find me. Are you on any social media? No. No. So. I work at the. I work for, help the Los Pinos Fly Shop. Okay. So yeah, Los Pinos Fly Shop. That's where you can probably find Ron. Uh, of course, you know where to find me: Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Mock Time of Fly Fishing. Thanks for coming along, and appreciate all my Patreon um, <clears throat> subscribers, and especially the VIP and producer patrons that. Uh, that uh, yeah, your names will show up at the end of this video, <laughs> or if they haven't already showed up. So thanks everybody for your support. All right, guys, take care. <laughs>